Hey guys, Nick here. In this video, we're going to take a look at Ethereum events and how we can use events on the front end to query certain aspects of a given smart contract. As we're going to see, events are mega useful in order to see what type of activity has happened in a given contract and also listen to things that may happen in the future so we can react to them and maybe change things in our user interface. So let's go ahead and dive in. I'm here on Stack Starter, and I'm going to go ahead and click Build. Get out of these. And just a quick recap on where we left off. So in the last two videos, what we did was we illustrated how to interact with a smart contract. And specifically, we're looking at a smart contract that follows the ERC-20 standard. Now, the ERC-20 standard, as you probably already know, is the standard for a fungible token. So this is the fungible token standard. It allows us to basically define some type of balance and for a given token and be able to transfer that token to different addresses. So the contract basically keeps track of balances for different addresses. Now what we did earlier was we simply just checked the balance or we just read a value from a smart contract that follows this standard. And that's just a read-only interface. We were just grabbing a value from the contract saying something like, hey, what is the balance of this token in my wallet, right? So we did that and we had this little function here called check token balance. And that was quite pretty simple. We were able to just return a value from a specific call into the smart contract after we instantiated it here. We are using the ethers library. So the ethers library is enabling us to uh, instantiate new smart contracts. And remember those, those three pieces that we need in order to actually call into a smart contract. We need the address of the contract, the ABI or the application binary interface and the provider. Now the provider is different depending on how we're calling into the contract. And we discovered this in the last video. The last video we, we, we discovered that we needed to, if we're reading the contract, we could just pass in a vanilla provider here. But if we are changing the state of the contract, for example, if we're going to send a token to another address, we're changing the internal state of that contract, we need to use this provider.getSigner method in order to get the signer address so that we can sign a transaction and send it up to the network to be mined. So how does this relate to events? Well, there are a couple of reasons why you'd want to use events, right? And, and really the core for us on the front end is to listen for certain aspects of the contract and trigger changes in, in our user interface. Now this is simple when we are just returning a value like we did up here. Um, and you can almost look at this as a very simple event where we're saying, hey, we want to check this balance and it's going to return a value right into the balance. Now we're not explicitly using events here for this. It's just like a vanilla function call that returns a value. But things get a little different when we start to send up transactions which change state. So when we send up a transaction like we did here in this transfer token function, we are calling into this um, we're actually calling into this transfer here. We still have this estimate gas, so we can actually take that out. Let's take this out. I was just illustrating to you how we can estimate the gas. We don't need that. And yeah, so that's all we need there. Now we're actually calling into that transfer and we're transferring an amount, which in this case, we're transferring one unit of this token. And we are using this LIBC token that we created and we're sending it to this address. Now what returns from this is not a value but a transaction object. Now the transaction object represents the transaction that we sent up to the network. That transaction may take time to become part of the actual, to be included in a block and then included in the actual overall blockchain. So we can't really rely on this transaction object. We can listen for certain aspects of this promise. So this, this returns a promise. This is where we're using the async and await, but a better way would be to use events. Now, if we look at the ERC-20 standard here, you can see that the smart contract, let me scroll up to the top here. 
you can see that the smart contract does define ev some events. So if we click on this, you'll see that there are two core events that need to be implemented in order for it to be an ERC-20 compliant contract. The first is transfer and the second is approval. We're gonna look at this transfer event. Now the transfer event will basically log information in the EVM, the Ethereum virtual machine, which is running on all of the nodes across the world, right? All the different distributed computers that are running Ethereum nodes will store this event in the, in the form of what's called a log. So you can think of events almost like a logging system in Ethereum. And it's a technically a cheaper way to store information than if you were to store it directly in the smart contract yourself. So this is a way to not only trigger events to tell people like broadcast like, hey, this happened, but also store, store historical data about what had happened in the past. And maybe in a subsequent video, we'll go into how we can query some of that historical data. But for now, we just want to listen for the transfer event and then just kind of log out that we did, we got the information from the event. Now, Ethereum events can index or store in its log up to three values. So you can see here that this event has three parameters here in the function signature. The first is the from, and then the second is the to, and these are both addresses, so the from and to addresses, and the third is the value. So this transfer event will fire any time a token is transferred from one address to another. So we can keep track of all of the different transactions of, or change of hands that this token has executed. And then we can use the from and to to query against that. And you can see here it's using this indexed keyword. So in this case, we are indexing only two pieces of information, the from and the to. So we can use these to search. So we could say, hey, show me all of the transfer events that happened from a specific address or to a specific address. So this is a pretty powerful concept that allows us to kind of peer into the, the smart contract and see different aspects of it. We can, and it doesn't have to just be our information, it could be any address to query it. So let's take a look at how we would actually do this. So if you guys recall, we have our super simple application here, which is, uh, you know, it's not gonna win any design awards, but it's enabling us to create this little, you know, almost like a menu of different examples of how you would interact with different aspects of uh, DApp development. So connecting to your wallet, checking your balance, sending transactions, and then interacting with an ERC-20 smart contract. Let me zoom in a little bit here so those buttons look a little bigger. And I'm gonna go ahead and get onto our console because most of the output will be on our console. So we have the ability to transfer LIBC. So if I go ahead and click this, I already have my wallet connected to this application and this is coded to transfer one LIBC to another address that I have here. And we can go ahead and do that and that will work just fine. But when that happens, I'm gonna go ahead and reject this one and that's fine. I'll clear that. When that happens, a transfer event will be fired. Now what we wanna do is we wanna actually listen for that transfer event. So what is that going to look like? Let's take a look. So let's go ahead and write a new function here. We're gonna go ahead and say const check events and we'll make this an async function even though I don't think we need to make this an async function, but we'll go ahead and make it one. Um, and we'll go just define this function. And we're gonna do the same exact thing in terms of instantiating this contract. Now we're doing this over and over again in these functions. Now typically you'd probably do this in one place and then maybe share this object across, maybe within a, an actual, another object that you created or something like that. But for illustration purposes, let's just keep it really simple and we'll kind of work this out a little bit, right? It's a little practice makes perfect type of thing where we'll get a little muscle memory in terms of instantiating a new contract. So I'm gonna say LIBC contract equals new ethers.contract. And what are those three things, right? We need that LIBC, we need the address, we need the ABI, and then we need the provider. Now question for you guys, do you think that we need the 
provider.getSigner call here, or do you think just passing in the provider as we did with the read-only contract would work? The question you want to ask is, are we changing any state inside of this contract? We're not, right? We're only reading information, historical information, about events that happened inside of the contract. So all we need to do here is say provider. Awesome. Now, this is a bit specific to Ethers. The Web3.js, I think the syntax is a little bit different. And maybe in, in other videos, maybe we can have a series on Web3.js, if that's interesting to any of you guys. Uh, definitely post in the comments if you have any suggestions on, on other content. We'd love to hear that. Um, we're going to use this. It's called the on method. And the on method is going to basically listen for specific events. We've actually used this with the uh, with the Ethereum API, I believe, right? We had it up here someplace. Here we go, yes. So we use this to listen to events with the Ethereum API that's in, that's injected with MetaMask. So it's gonna it's gonna look very similar to that, which I like because it kind of keeps the keeps the the way that we're using these tools pretty consistent. So we're gonna go ahead and say libc contract dot on, and we're gonna open our parameters here, and we're gonna give it the name of the event that we want to listen to. So in this case, we're gonna say transfer, and then we're gonna give it the parameters for what we want to get back, right? What, what do we expect? We, we expect those three parameters. So the from, the two, and some amount, right? Or we could call it value. And this is going to be a function. So we're going to go ahead and create a new function here, All right? So this is basically an anonymous function here, a little, little JavaScript syntax. And that's looking good. So now, we should be able to say console.log got the event, and then maybe we'll just console.log um, from to and the amount. Now the amount is going to be returned like any amount that we're, we've been working with so far as a big number. So we can go ahead and just say to string to see the actual value. That's gonna give us that, you know, 10 to the 18th power kind of string here. Awesome. So now, typically we may want to do this in like the on load or something like that when we first instantiate the contract so that any event that happens will be listening to it. We do need to call this because we're not doing that, right? So what we could probably do here is just quite simply, maybe just call this right over here. So I'm gonna take this console log out and I'm gonna say check events. And we'll just call that right in the transfer token function. So when we transfer a token, we're gonna to go ahead and create the contract. We're gonna go ahead and execute the transfer. And then we're gonna go ahead and just register this, this listener for the transfer event. This isn't technically the best way to do it, right? Because then we're going in and we're actually creating the contract again, but it should illustrate that we are listening for the transfer event, just to give you guys an idea on how to actually listen to events. So let's see if this works. Go back to our application, let's refresh it, and let's say transfer LIBC. Now we're gonna go ahead and transfer one, confirm. Now we should have a transaction out there executing, and you can see that MetaMask right here. It is pending. It's gonna take a couple of seconds to cook there. We are on the Gorelli test network. And it should be, boom, there it is. Excellent, and look at that. So we, we got the event. And we got the from and the to and the amount and everything looks solid. We do that again and we'll get the events again. So that is a real quick basic introduction on how we can use events that get emitted in smart contracts on the front end and react to those. So we can do a bunch of things here. We can maybe render something on the screen that says, you know, your transfer is successful and maybe you know, make some cool graphics go off or something like that. Uh, um, so it's quite powerful. Now, I, I think in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to see how we can use this event functionality to query historical information. So maybe we want to create a list of all of the transfers that a given account has ever done in a given smart contract. Um, or maybe we'll do something a, a little bit more interesting.
But if you guys have any ideas, please go ahead and post it in the comments below. If you guys are getting value out of this content, please subscribe. Trying to post pretty regularly here and um, really enjoying learning this stuff with you guys, getting a chance to meet a lot of, a lot of interesting folks, reaching out to me on email and things like that. So um, thanks again, guys, for watching. Until next time, have fun. Thanks.